it's not only boiler chicken, layer chicken, and noiler chicken that are actually profitable. There's another one more chicken that is actually profitable, which you don't know. In fact, if I even go to your farm today, or if I come to your farm today, you don't have that chicken in your farm currently. And that chicken is actually turkey. Most people don't usually wear turkey because maybe it's quite expensive, but it is profitable too. All right. Actually, I I went to one of my customer farm not last week, and he told me that the turkey that he bought for me are actually laying egg now. I want to know the the amazing part. He did chicken laid over 20 eggs do you know that um turkey can lay over 20 eggs in one bed if you don't know i will tell you today that turkey has chances even laying more than 25 eggs in a bed but in the case of that customer he said that at, at the beginning stage he was laying from uh, laying different places so you get to a point as 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 um as the turkey is laying different places they were picking the eggs and they were eating it so it gets to a point that the turkey started laying in one place so and right now as i speak the turkey is now sitting on the eggs which means is sitting around is the cost the customer said is sitting around 14 eggs that means there's possibility that at the end of let's say november we should be having let's say let's say estimate of nine turkeys new new ones to his own farm not my own farm because he bought them for me so what am i trying to say imagine those um nine two grow and do the same thing like their mother he will have so many turkeys to sell it's not all about boilers see one thing i always advise farmers is that once you are able to diversify your portfolio eh, you will progress in the business because agriculture as agriculture um agriculture as a whole is an investment all right so an investment to me that study business i feel that Anything that involves investing, you should diversify it. It should not be one portfolio. It should be different portfolio. So that is how you can have a successful investment if you want to go into agriculture. Now, the question is, how can you raise those turkey, or how can you start? Actually. There are two major breeds we have here in Nigeria. There are, I don't want to start mentioning the name, I don't want to get you confused, but just put it just put it like this. We have local one and we have foggy one. So local and foreign. Um let's just put it this way. The local one doesn't um the local one is not that big, like there are some there are some turkey that you see that are very big. It just as long as those ones are not they are not foggy one, but um those foggy one they are usually big, but mostly for meat production. But you see the local one, there are chances that it will sit on its eggs, but the foggy one don't have chances of sitting on its egg. So that is um I will leave you with that decision to make which one you want to pick, uh. And if you are a beginner into the farm, into the business, and you don't know how to boot those foreign one, I would advise you not to buy it because you there are chances that they might die because you don't know how to boot them. So the best thing is to go for the look uh, the local one. That even the local one, if you don't know how to breed them, they will still die. So the best thing is just to know how to breed. If you know how to breed them successfully, then you should be able to, you can even mix them. Eh? You can mix them and there will, there will be no problem. But in a nutshell, let me just illustrate it like this. The local one has chances for meat and egg production. And for the foreign one, it has um, potentials of meat only.
because he cannot sit on his eggs. That is the two difference. Um, the, the two differentiation between them. All right. I hope you understand something. So let's move to the next one. Now for the housing, uh, I know you should be. I know right now you'll be thinking that okay, uh, where should I put them after building them? Now, once you're able to build them successful and you don't have any kind of mortality, even though you have, it's fine. That is that is the business we are dealing with living thing. So if eventually those you boo them and they get to yes say one month, you can then you should then by then we should have opened the windows and um do other things that you need to do. You need to get sodas and all those things. Once you have moved all those cartons and every other thing that you need to remove at that building stage, then when they are getting to yes say three um three months or two months, what I do is that I will allow them to free range. Because uh <laughs> Turkey, eh, they eat a lot. I won't lie, they eat a lot because the way they are big, that is the same way they eat a lot. So I'm trying to you know figure out how you can feed them normally but something came to my head and i noticed that there is no how the only way you can do it is early in the morning you go to the farm and you give them their normal feed then after then you free them they then go out at it so that is the way i've been, I've been doing it because turkey eats a lot a lot but just make sure that their daily intake eh? make sure that their daily intake is intact let me see, what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that let's say that in a day they will eat uh per, per turkey, we eat yes say 300 grams per day. Just make sure that that 300 grams that one turkey we eat, give it to that turkey. Don't say um because I have much many turkey, I will start starving them. No, that is when you start encountering problems. And I don't want you to encounter problems. Just do what you need to do. Do the right thing that you need to do, and you will enjoy the benefit as time goes on. So don't stop them, please. I beg you. And um, that is everything else I have to tell you for the housing. After that building stage, just free leave them, but make sure that you give them that daily intake, and that is all. Now, the next you also need to consider is the feeding aspect. As I said before, what I have explained some certain things in um, in the previous um, in this. If you check the video backward, uh, um, you will notice that I said some things about feeding. Now I want to break it down to break it down to a level that even a lay person, a child, can be able to understand what I'm trying to say. Now for that starter feed that you are giving them when they are um, when they are still young. Their starter feed should be around 28% cooked protein. Alright? It should be around 28% cooked protein. Because at that stage, if you are if you give them a lot of soya, trust me, they will boost very well. They will boost very well. Even in as in as much that they are local or foreign, they will boost very well. Just make sure that in that early stage, you give them a lot, a lot of protein. So once you're able to give them a lot of protein, they will be able to grow rapidly. If because okay, let's put it like this. Imagine a child, huh? Imagine a child that is of yes say a year old, yes say six months. You know that child will consume a lot of protein. Because if that child doesn't have a lot of protein, that means it can have all this kind of if you have um there will be much uh, my nutrition ahead. so that is what i'm that is what i'm 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 trying to lay you uh, that is what i'm trying to tell you there will be malnutrition you will see some of them that they will have abnormal goods some will be want and some will look you know just somehow because at the early stage there is not enough nutrient for them so i think i've been able to make you understand something now the other thing you also need to know is their goa feed. That goa feed is when they are getting to, or when they have gotten to two months, then you have to think how you can, the protein will now reduce to 20, 20 to 24%. Alright? 
and the carbohydrates should be around 40 percent because they need energy to grow so at that stage you need to start giving them a lot of energy and the carbon the protein will reduce and if you want um if you if you don't want all this too much of percentage 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 you can just get the feed formulation uh from Sierra farm it costs only 500 never check the description section you will be able to get a, a proper um comprehensive formula on how you can make turkey feed and with that you will leave all these percentage 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 so that is one of the easiest way you can actually grow your nutrition for your animals now coming back to what i've said before the last thing is free ranging so uh, once they're able to get to some certain level what you just have to do is to free range them allow them to move around allow them to you know do um, their normal daily activities after you have given them their daily intake so i think that is all i need to tell you for that among among all the chicken that i know eh? you see turkey turkey is one of the chicken that drink water a lot due to the consume feed a lot you also need to get water for them because turkey consume water a lot when they say a lot they consume water a lot so as a farmer you also need to provide clean water for them all right so um don't another thing is not it's not about provi um, providing water for them once you know that there are some things that you need to put into that water like drugs make sure that you put it and if you know that you're not treating them just make sure that you give them plain water and let the water be clean and i think with that they will be fine now another thing i also want you to take note of is actually their health all right their health and you know anything that concerns health we also relate to disease see the easiest way to prevent disease in um in turkey farm is by making sure that their environment is clean those places those places where they will sleep at night try as much as possible to clean it you know it's not that because they are because you are free ranging them don't say it's none of my it's none of my business i don't I, I, I don't care about them anymore no those places that are dirty try as much as possible to clean them another thing you also need to take note is vaccine all right the vaccine try as much as possible to take it serious one of the vaccines that you give to them is actually one, you give them Gumbo disease and Gumbo vaccine, and the second one you give them Lasuta, then the third one you give them foul pulse. Then the remaining the remaining uh, vaccine should be given by the archery that you, you bought them from. So the um the the Gumbo disease, the Gumbo vaccine is actually meant to prevent a disease called Gumbo. Actually, that disease is actually bad and once it's once there is a breakout in the farm it might take out all your flocks all of them so the best thing is to prevent is by giving them vaccine and that um, vaccine that you also need to give them is actually lasota lasota is meant to prevent new castle disease and that one too is also a very deadly disease and once it occurs it might take out all your turkey i mean everything now the last one is um foul pulse where you will see how you will be seeing some bubbles on their faces they are um ah, trying to remember their faces their head of their head their nose you will see some bubbles there and uh, once you press it it will burst and uh, it will bring out water and all those things are called foul pulse and um, they are not good sometimes they kill the turkey and I believe that those things happen around that, around that 12 weeks, around that time and by then they would have gone and you have spent a lot of money and um, once they die, that would be a loss for you and which is very bad and um, it might affect your profit so the best thing is try as much as possible to prevent it and once you're able to prevent it, you will not have a problem another thing you also need to do is observation all right it's not all about um giving out drugs giving them medi uh, medication charts 
another thing uh, one thing the most important thing is making sure that you have that observation whenever they are sick whenever they are sneezing when they whenever they are coughing when they, whenever they lose appetite of eating you are able to observe it so what am i trying to say what i'm trying to say is that as a farmer you also need to try and observe your turkey whenever they are sick so with that you should be able to rush out to your veterinary doctor and complain to your veterinary uh, your veterinarian and telling telling him or she that oh look at what i've observed because once you go to your veterinary doctor your veterinary doctor will ask you some question like what have you observed and if you don't have anything to tell he, he or she they will say you are not taking care of them well so the best thing is you need to be observant all right you need to be observant whenever uh maybe when you are feeding them you just keep your eyes on them and uh, make sure that everything is well you know they are warming out and they are, they are spreading out their wings you know or to just to show that they are active you know so that is uh, that is one of the things you also need to do just to make sure that their health is safe all right so that is one of the things you need to do as a turkey farmer you know i you know i told you that once they have gotten to three months you should free them that like you need to free them to warm about you know so that they can search for their food it's very important for you to make sure that you are able to protect them too despite that um despite that they are free ranging and how can you protect them where they will be they will be fenced you know so that they will you will be able to block their limits what, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because of predictors. Like someone can come to your farm or your compound. Maybe you don't have a farm. You are, you are just wearing it in your compound. Someone can come there and steal your stocky. It's possible. You know, in my group, we we <laughs> people people complain about that, that someone came to their farm and steal their stuff. So, or there are sometimes that you know, like wild animals like snake dogs and um scorpions and all those kind of things can just attack the animals and it will kill the animal so as a farmer you also need to try as much as possible to make sure that you protect them despite that they are free ranging now the last thing i also wanted to tell you that if you are a if you are into turkey farming because of um you want to make profit out of it then you should also consider doing um, marketing and recording. You know, the two of them are very important because I guess you will not be the one to feed on your turkey. So I guess you want to sell them. And due to you want to sell them, you have to... So due to you want to sell them, you have to create market for them. All right? You have to create market for them. So that is for the marketing and sales aspect. Now, the last one, which is recording. All right? Recording is one of the things that you also need to do because that will help you to determine your profit. So you need to try as much as possible to do recording and that is one of the ways you can actually grow your farm. I think that is all I have to tell you for this video and I want you to subscribe to this channel. I will see you in my next video. Bye.